Hello everyone, my name is Alipte with my co-host Aishwarya and our returning guest for the third time in a row, <laughs> Mohammed. Welcome to the WebDev podcast where we discuss interesting web technologies and communities. In this episode, we're going to be going into some uh, t- uh, some de- into some detail about maintaining responsive images and their aspect ratio mm-hmm. on your website. Then we're going to go into some two, I know at least, and then maybe a third MR and contribution potential for Capybara that we're doing. And the first one of that is the Z index that you worked on for the sidebar along with Ashwarya. So let's get let's jump right into our main topic for the week, which is uh, the, what the role of aspect ratio boxes is in maintaining image aspect ratio, and then what we can do with a new property that came out in 2018 or so called object fit. Mm-hmm. So aspect ratio boxes are used a lot for images and videos. videos yes. Yeah. So when you want to like have stuff that you want like a box to respond to the page size, mm-hmm. but also to maintain its aspect ratio because otherwise it's either going to get cut off or it's going to go into weird dimensions right. and lose its thing. And it plays a big part in I guess e-commerce sites and stuff. So I know Ashura, you've been. Uh, you probably took some time to look into this too because recently we've been working on it for our product page in yes. Capybara. So mm-hmm. do you have any um, notes, anything you want to discuss about it? Uh, I want to take this discussion uh, a little uh, backward uh, before the this aspect ratio thing. The people or developers who used to put images on their dome element or their website. Uh, f- if we just p- put any image on the uh, uh, dome, uh, then it will not shrink or resize with the page size. So people came up with the idea or maybe developer came up with the ideas to uh, restrict one th- of the height of it and make the other uh, dynamic to, uh, for the page size so they used to uh, make it auto or uh, and fix the other element of the image uh, that was kind of working fine but was uh, also skewing the image uh, so then uh, designers and developers came with this uh, aspect ratio boxes and they uh, basically aspect ratio boxes uh, boxes are uh, padding <laughs> and not the actual element there majorly in uh, aspect ratio bo- boxes we uh, set height to zero we define the padding in uh, calculation in a uh, aspect ratio size and uh, then we put the background image or video whatever media we want there uh, as a background on that padding or the area that is created by the padding so this is the idea how we use or implement the expect ratio box most of the the people uh, prefer to have the exact image size and uh, they import that exact size they have uh, versions of their images and they want uh, it to be exact there and they design the whole page so the uh, image won't skew and yeah, they don't want to like accidentally crop mm-hmm. it or something. So you're saying they like if you don't like a, a lot of people who don't use this are actually going into like having their designers or somebody and go into Photoshop and actually cut up the images to be the exact ratio that yes, they need it to many be. Many of the people do this. Okay, and so then the container that they put it in is also the same measurement, mm-hmm. the same exact measurement. And the reason that this came up into came across we came across this is because um, in Capybara the gallery component yes. and the SF image component use this to size themselves. Mm-hmm is what we're trying to do is get some critical information on the product page above the fold which is like the bottom edge of the display when you open it so to do that we have to make sure that the <clears throat> that the image or like the size of the image is dynamically calculated to allow that space the main issue that we ran into this was it respects width and it kind of sizes itself based on the width of the um, of the document but the problem is that, which is why we really started debating how to proceed further with images, is when you have an aspect ratio box and you change the height, it just crops into the image. In an ideal world where we're respecting image aspect ratio, we would make sure that if we change the height on our e-commerce site, the image is still never cropped or like the aspect ratio is still maintained. Yes. And that's the main issue we're running into with aspect ratio boxes. And to fix this, I think it's a pretty easy solution, but the problem is the way the components are written, we're not able to do it right now, right away into the SF image and stuff like that. But 
if I were to maybe start this from the beginning, I think the way I would do it is there's this HTML property called um, object fit, yes. which is specifically for media. And this is pretty much exactly what everybody on the web has wanted for maintaining aspect ratios. And what we can do is there's uh, four different kinds of properties that this um, offers. Starting with none, that just puts it puts the image in the height and like the original dimensions of the image and makes sure nothing is cut off. Mm -hmm. uh, scale down is something similar. It scales it down to make sure it fits, but it uh, also it maxes out at the height of the mm -hmm. original image. Mm -hmm. And then cover is, so you know how I mentioned in fit, it respects the smaller dimension. So in cover, it makes sure it's um, respecting the larger dimension. So the whole view is always filled. Mm -hmm. So even if it has to cut off, like maybe some side of it, it makes sure that it's edge to edge no matter what. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's cover and then contain is the smaller one of the two. So that one maintains your aspect ratio no matter what. Fill is what this is. Well, it's um, something like stretch. Yeah, it'll skew the image basically. Yeah. It'll change the dimension, so yeah. depending on how it needs to fit, so it won't cut, it won't crop the image in any way. It'll mm -hmm. just make it look weird and bad. Yeah, so that's object fit contained. So it, to make an aspect ratio box out of this, what I found was okay. So in this next bit of the podcast, um, I was going to explain how I would use object fit to create an aspect ratio box instead of the traditional way. Unfortunately, I didn't do a really good job of actually explaining what I wanted to say. So I'm gonna use this cutaway right here to re-explain. The core difference is that in a traditional aspect ratio box, the container is responsible for maintaining the aspect ratio of the actual image. That responsibility is now shifted to the object fit property. So simply by using contain in object fit, the image will now maintain its intrinsic aspect ratio. So after that, you can size the image any way you want. And no matter if you respect the aspect ratio of the actual image or not, the image will still hold its own aspect ratio. So you'll never skew the image and it'll never be cut off, never be cut off anywhere. And your whole design will be more prepared for different um, image sizes. Um, if you still want your container, uh, container's height or width to be a, a function of the other, so in a traditional aspect ratio box, the height is a percentage of the width. What, uh, you can now just use a CSS variable to do a little bit of math. So you can take your width in a CSS variable and like an image width uh, variable. And then for your height, you can feed that in as maybe like whatever the ratio you want divided by the width. So kind of similar to how you would do it in an aspect ratio box, but now you just use uh, CSS and that just gives you a lot more flexibility down the road when you want to edit your thing. All right, back to the podcast. Uh, basically, this uh, expect ratio box uh, is a kind of hacky thing mm -hmm. and not an actual uh, thing which CSS provides you. Or it's kind of uh, settlement that you add the padding and then you add the background to show the images. It's not the actual way how HTML and CSS gives you properties to show the images. And uh, now when uh, CSS comes with this object uh, fit and uh, object position, uh, they have something uh, uh, actually uh, dedicated proper CSS properties for the for maintaining aspect, ra aspect ratio. And uh, now things are very much easier for a developer or for anyone, uh, any newbie who just want to uh, maintain the aspect ratio of, of the images. Mm -hmm. There's a great YouTube video about this that I'll also put in the description or somewhere, which is Layout Land's video mm -hmm. about object fit and all of its properties. It's very, she very like elegantly explains how everything works and how you should be using it. Yes. Uh, for me, uh, the not only for me most of the developers use the aspect ratio boxes as that this is the only correct uh, solution we have if we want to maintain the ratio uh, and don't want to skew the image in the web uh, and uh, this uh, object fit is a very new thing uh, which came and uh, so uh, no one tells you to uh, to use the uh, the, uh, new things or uh, to trust uh, whatever new in the market and uh, when you go for want to go for production or for a client uh, you want the best thing which uh, which is sure shot to be uh, give you results yeah, totally reliable yeah totally re reliable so now uh, as you are saying that uh, object fit is uh, uh, around two years old 
So yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I think it's more than two because this is saying Safari version 7, and Safari's on version 13 right now. So we're definitely good browser support. So if, even if you want to use this in production, you're not going to have any yeah. browser support issues. So many uh, people uh, want to have the IE support. I don't know why, but uh, people... Uh, Microsoft doesn't support IE anymore in case somebody <laughs> wants to know. But yeah, people still love it. Go ahead. People used to want that we also want our website in IE. Uh, so this object fit uh, isn't uh, in... Uh, supported by IE, but uh, I definitely uh, think that uh, this property is far better than using uh, aspect ratio. Maybe there are uh, some chances that there are s some scenarios or cases that I haven't came across with where aspect ratios is uh, the right thing to use instead of object fit. But that's also going to be interesting on how we're going to implement that because I know it's just the way it's tied up with the gallery image library that they're mm -hmm. using there and then there's um the fact that the height is sent in through do you know where the height or the aspect ratio is stated i think it's in the javascript right? yes it's in the js yeah so that's going to be a pretty monumental shift to s send that over to css mm -hmm. variables which is another thing i forgot is if we use css variables here we can have the height be a percent of the width yeah. So if you want to do that aspect ratio kind of mm -hmm. logic where people maybe like that, I, I can just do division and make it work. What you can do is instead uh, in max width, also define variables for those of what you want the height and width to be. So similarly how we, the user gets to, the developer gets to input um, the height and width and that becomes the ratio in SFUI. We can just make CSS variables for mm -hmm. that. And when you give those values, that becomes the aspect ratio. It also lets us make uh, custom sizes for desktop and mobile if mm -hmm. anybody ever wants the flexibility that, hey, maybe my thumbnails should be super small on mobile mm -hmm. because they don't need to be that prominent. But mm -hmm. too bad, right now we have to use the desktop sizes. So managing it all in CSS would let us dynamically do that too. Mm -hmm. Object fit is still uh, something that we're working on evangelizing in our office still because people in uh, the main it's the main Hallmax Commerce that we have, the backend screens all use a weird, like they use object fit contain, but they use it by making the image a background image, which I don't understand. Like you already have the solution, why do you have, but we haven't gotten to that yet. That's a, a low priority item, but in our apps, we've been starting to implement this, which has been a real blessing, I guess. So in the SF gallery, we do pass the image with an image height, right? Yeah, so in SF gallery, there's two slots. There's um, one height and width for the thumbnails, and yeah. then one height and width for the main stage mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. And then on that, the width is fine, but as soon as we start messing with the height, it starts cropping into the image. Ba -da -ba -da. Next, we have sidebar Z index. Omar, take it away. So uh, the issue is uh, like when we open any sidebar, if there are any sticky or uh, sticky content at the bottom of the sidebar, it actually gets hidden by the uh, bottom navigation which we have in the KP Bara. Uh, so to fix this issue, uh, we actually uh, didn't have didn't have to do much. We just need to fix this Z index of the sidebar. So when we researched more about this issue, we issue we, we actually uh, uh, concluded that uh, sidebar uh, sidebar should be the uh, topmost element on the uh, stack, on your uh, element stacks, right? Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, when you open the sidebar, uh, all hierarchically, the it should hierarch be the hierarchically it should be on the top of mm -hmm. the top and uh, nothing uh, else should overlay the sidebar yeah. because yeah, when you open it, you just uh, need to access the sidebar, right? right. So For examples, uh, sorry, I, uh, I want to just yeah. side in, like just give a little few case studies that we went into. Mm -hmm. So for case studies, we looked at Twitter, which yes. does this where they have the bottom navigation for all their things, and then they also have a pretty extensive side navigation. Yeah. And Material and Google, a lot of basically yeah. all of Google Apps, and that they they kind of pioneered this whole like mm. pi, like hamburger navigation, and mm. the way they've set the standard is sidebar always opens above everything else. Above everything, yes. yeah. So yeah, basically, uh, so to fix this, we actually fix the Z index of the sidebar. Mm -hmm. We feel that the Z index uh, uh, should be the greatest for the uh, sidebar. So uh, we did nothing. We we have the sidebar Z index property from SFUI. Okay. So we just increased it value for two right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are. I am actually discussing with the community also. So how's that discussion going? 
actually there are two aspects of the, uh, that discussion mm -hmm. i feel that the sidebar should have uh, uh, by default should have a z index a larger value a larger value of z index so that uh, nothing comes uh, something, about like 999. That, something like 999 in the community uh, they feel that uh, the z index value should not be set by default the developer uh, who who is using the uh, using the uh, library will set it uh, according to his need mm -hmm. so yeah but uh, that's actually debatable right now yeah. but yeah i feel that the, we should uh, uh, make it default in this uh, in the sfui itself but yeah if uh, uh, if we don't want to do that but then at least we should go go ahead and uh, Set exactly. its value in the capybara yes. because in the capybara we do have this uh, problem problem of sidebar getting hidden by the bottom navigation. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess at that point we'd make it like a global rule that just affects yeah. everything, and the person yeah. who's making it doesn't have to remember. Yeah. Yes. So at least in capybara we can make it a global rule. Like mm -hmm. uh, for now, we'll we have increased this z index of the sidebar as two because. We, because it is working for us right now, uh, the uh, value 2 is working for us right now. Mm -hmm. We don't know if uh, in future there comes, uh, there uh, there will be any element which <coughs> which will have uh, a z index more than 2 and we need to again fix the z index of the sidebar. Mm -hmm. So that's again a question, uh, uh, that's why the z index is actually a confusing topic yeah. and most mm -hmm. of the developers try to avoid that mm. uh, avoid the set, uh, avoid setting the z index mm. because yeah there are there could be certain elements in the page which which have different z index and they sh they might conflict with e with each other mm. yes so yeah i wonder if um a good because of i i what i'm understanding is main most of the discussion is happening around should this be an sfui or should it be in capybara yeah it has to be there but yeah. which one should it be yes, yes so i think for sfui if we looked into i know ionic has a hamburger menu and i'm sure google's material design like the web like the open source project they have they've probably done something for this i know ionic we don't set it separately so that means the overlay or the component itself is has its z index set. Uh, maybe it's because uh, any uh, any other elements doesn't have c z index set and mm. since the overlay is itself a position position fixed or position absolute uh, yeah. it is uh, getting stacked the top. top of the uh, all, all the other elements right. mm. so yeah that's basically z index so z index is nothing but it sets the uh, it's it is the property which you set to uh, show the uh, element in the third dimension actually yeah. in the z in the z uh, dimension it seems simple in the first go when you think that it is uh, you just set the value of z index uh, for the element which you want to be on top mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for if you have multiple elements then you just set it you set the value uh, of the element larger for the element which which you want to be on the t uh, top of the other element i wonder if I, like we, we could give this more thought, but I think apart from modals, there's nothing else in SFUI that's really like there's absolute position stuff, but there's nothing else that needs a Z index. Right. There's no like tool tips or anything. So it could be a pretty simple, I think, overarching rule that these two are the only elements and they have the same Z index because mm -hmm. they're like that could be a way that these are styled as all overlays are positioned at level two. And then all cookie notifications are like all like notifications and alerts mm -hmm. are positioned at level three, mm -hmm. and you could create like a semantic meaning to it, which is like the higher the level, the higher like the urgency level is. So something like that. Uh, these things should definitely be a part of uh, Capybara. Means okay. they they should be in Capybara. Uh, we can't uh, think of uh, not having them in Capybara. And uh, it's uh, as Mohammed sir said that it's debatable that we want to keep them in uh, SFUI or not because SFUI is kind of library and it gives you tool. It don't uh, up, now it's up to the uh, whole community if they want to give the tool with a default value or not. Yeah. So whatever the community decide, but yeah, it should be a part of Capybara. I think everyone will ag agree in community also that we should have that index for the yeah, overlays. For giving a CSS variable, even if we have a default value, it's very easy to just not mm. use it. So mm. I know you have more to talk about for Z index. I know you prepared uh, some talking points. So if you want to go over those, we can have a discussion on that. Yeah, there's nothing much, right? Like I just wanted to uh, uh, discuss regarding uh, 
some of the rules of the z index like as i mentioned z index defines the position of the element in the third dimension literally mm-hmm. and uh, the other other rule is z index is only applied on the elements which which are positioned other than the static mm-hmm. like uh, the position absolute element position fixed element like that okay so yeah and the uh, if we see the def- default stacking order of the element then uh, the position uh, if 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 an element is positioned fixed or position absolute and uh, there is another element which is just position positioned static in the uh, dom then the uh, default static order will be like the absolute positioned element will be stacked above the non positioned element without the z index mm-hmm. and uh, uh, basically z index is used for uh, defining the order of order of the uh, elements uh, when there are more than uh, one position non positioned right. elements in the dom mm-hmm. so, so what happens so in that picture z index uh, come in, comes into play when you want to when you want to decide the order of the yeah stacking elements so what happens if you have two absolute positioned items and you don't give them a z index which one do you see on top or what so is it the, the one that comes after shows yeah. up on top the one which is defined before in the template mm-hmm. will be positioned at below the, the yeah. uh, below the one so which as is it reads them after that. The yeah top. as it reads them it, it uh yeah as it, it puts them on the top so mohammed mm-hmm. uh what you're saying is the the default stacking order of these is as you uh, as it, the HTML is read by the computer top left uh, top left to bottom right, mm-hmm. as it finds the divs that are positioned absolutely, it just starts stacking them as it finds them with the right. latest one on the top. Right. And so if you have five, it just you know, start stacks. Bottom is one, top is five. Right. But so what happens if um what happens if I give one of their children a Z index? So does that mean it stays in its parents' context, so like it doesn't go anywhere, or does it go above everything else? How does yeah. that work? Yeah. Actually, that's the scenario where Z index actually becomes confusing because the if you have a child uh, whose parent doesn't have a Z index, then that child will remain in the global Z index structure okay. or global Z index. So Z index is compared to all of the other all Z of indexes. The other. Yeah. As soon as you give the a parent uh, uh, its own z index mm-hmm. then that uh, that child will actually work uh, with respect to that parent's z index and not the uh, global z index which we have for uh, all the other parent basically it's like a scoped z, z index and they are they have uh, their own scope of their parent and if parent isn't having any scopes then they'll play in the global scope so yeah so i guess it can so be- that makes it uh, really confusing for developer for uh, in the uh, in the context that how do you how will you decide the actual values of the z index for and it all probably gets hard to remember all of these z right. indexes because once right. the parent has context yes you can't bring it out of that context right. it has to stay in that so yes. at that point it can't overlap anything else yes. in the stack hmm. that's that must get really confusing in big <laughs> websites i guess that's that's the reason why the uh, sfui community is uh, community is, is refraining from using for using the z index value maybe yeah i guess that makes sense well <laughs> So before I close out this topic moment, is there anything else you want to add to the Z index conversation? Uh, I think we have covered covered up uh, everything as we talked about this uh, stacking context. Uh, not only Z, there is no not only Z index which uh, creates their own stacking context. There are several other properties mm-hmm. uh, in the CSS which may which creates their own stacking context and which which in turns make it more confusing to use Z index. Okay. So. Uh, those properties are actually listed in this uh, this link right here. This link which we opened. I'll so include yeah. this in the description so people can go and check out this link. Uh, it's a link about all the other properties that you also affect the way that Z index is calculated. Great. So we've hit our time limit. So the t- other two MRs and the con- work, the kind of fields of work that we had planned out for today, which was mm-hmm. around the mega menu and. Dis- and the way we display color filters, we'll have to cover those in next week's episode. Yes. So more content. Woo. <laughs> um, great. Any closing remarks? Uh, after that, we can close it out for the day. Nope. No closing remarks. <laughs> One month now. I think yeah. Uh, this session uh, 
especially regarding the aspect ratio yeah this was actually a good learning thing for me so great. yeah it was great to Wonderful. be here also great that we got to give you a full session this time so got to hear a lot more from you that was nice <laughs> and i hope we'll see you again next week and then at that point we'll just make you a regular <laughs> <laughs> all right bye bye <laughs> <laughs>